you had said about uh, you didn't actually buy comics. You actually would steal them from your sister. Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since I've had edited videos, but I've got a treat for you today. I recently had superstar artist David Finch join me and my co-host, Comic Book Bob, on a live stream. And this is how it went. Uh, we hope that everyone is staying safe, you're staying indoors, and you guys are all okay. It's a great way to come out and interact with each other and be safe. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our special guest, guys. I'm, I'm excited, I'm nervous, so I'm probably gonna geek out. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite book, my favorite comic book artist, along with a buddy of mine, artist David Finch. Dave, Hi, thanks for having me, and really, you know, I appreciate it, but like, we talk all the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's yeah, I just noticed, I'm not Meredith, it says Meredith, I'm, I'm using her. <laughs> oh, I was, right, right, we just, I just I now noticed that. that but there you go. Oh, it's hey, you know, right. hey, your wife's awesome too. So, man, it's a uh, no problem there. She's telling me to turn it down. She just came in here. It's too loud. I don't know how. I don't know how. On the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> so, on the other, uh, are you on a Mac? That's awesome. There. Better? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we're good. Cool. That's that awesome. that'll also keep the echoes down if anything like that. Oh. Okay. So, but you know, me me hanging out with you, you know, and, and getting to work with you. And geeking out the way I am, it's like it must be the same feeling that you get when you get to work with Meredith Finch. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, every day. Awesome. So, uh, people out there, I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna open up questions where everyone's gonna come out, and and I'm sure they're gonna have a lot of questions and things, guys. Uh, so, if you post your questions inside of the chat, we'll 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 try to get to them. Uh, we'll try to get to as many as we can. We're also gonna do a live inking demo where I'm gonna ink. David Finch's artwork that's for an actual cover uh, live on this channel. So you guys will get to see that. Um, so Bob, do you have any, any questions you, you want to ask David? Oh God. Uh, yeah. Hang on. Let me, let me get my notes out. <laughs> um, so one of the things I was going to actually want to talk to you about, and we were just actually uh, mentioning it is um, uh, you doing right now, you're doing that, um, uh, that auction. Uh, for the piece to uh, to uh, help out the uh, uh, local comic book stores, right? And uh, I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna throw that in the uh, the chat here for everybody to take a look at it here. Yeah, thank um, you. is that part of the is that part of the um, the thing that Jim Lee's doing, or is this just something you guys are doing on your own? This is something with uh, Bendis, Brian Bendis, and mm -hmm. and some other people. Um, so it's not the thing that Jim Lee's doing, but it, I mean, it's, you know, basically the same kind of thing. Binkfoundation.org is what it says on the thing that you just put up, which I appreciate. It's really great you guys to do that. Oh, no problem. Thank you for coming out. No problem. Let me go ahead and get this up here so I can, everybody can take a look at this piece. I'm gonna share this out. Oh, Jim, James already got it. Okay. Yeah, so that's do, awesome, Matt. Where do people go if they want to bid on it? Uh, Meredith's Twitter. My wife's Twitter. It's uh, Finch. I don't know what yeah, I dropped it in there. Oh yeah, oh good. Okay, it's in there. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I think it's up to was it thirty five hundred right now? Yeah, yeah. Which is that's really cool. So, but uh, I know a lot of uh, artists are doing that. I just didn't know if that was uh, it was connected to that or if you guys were doing it on your own. But yeah, yeah. I mean, like every little bit helps. So yeah, and uh, winning better, it, it just pays directly to the charity. So you know. Yeah. You won't steal it. Uh, no, nope, no problem. But uh, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna start going over uh, bits and pieces of your career here because when I first I, I first started uh, um, following you back when uh, I think you were doing the um, uh, you were doing Ascension. Uh, you started doing Ascension with uh, was it Matt Banning? Matt Banning, yeah, Bat. That was '97. It's a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then I, I I actually started following you when you did that. But uh, you, you originally started on uh, was it, it was what uh, it was a um, Cyberforce, right? Cyberforce, yeah. I started out as an intern, um, which is how we all started. You know, uh, backgrounds and pinups, and basically at the time, Image was doing well enough that they were able to you know nurture younger artists and you know bring us in and. Even though we weren't ready, you know, you can do a pinup, and if it sucked, it was okay. It was just a group of pinups from new guys, and <laughs> so we all, you know, kind of learned in the same environment. And I think we learned faster. I remember when uh, Mike Turner came in, and uh, he learned so quickly. It just 
you could well and i say you i i didn't teach him anything but mark Silvestri, our boss would, would show him something and right away he would have it it would take me a month you know it was frustrating but it also really pushed me i think it really pushed all of us uh joe benitez at, at one point another artist there he started uh looking at a lot at hr geiger and doing like a lot of this intricate kind of the hr geiger is the artist that did uh alien you know yeah i'm the alien creature for the movie and uh so he started putting that in and so then we all stole it and you know that's i, I remember being accused of having a house style and to a certain extent it's true but it wasn't it wasn't an enforced house style and we weren't a bunch of you know automatons it's just that somebody would pick up something cool and it would just spread and we were you know growing learning from each other and that's a natural part of it is you know we were influenced by each other yeah and it's like you see that with a lot of artists you know like like uh travis charay like he started off as like a jim lee clone and then just little by little by little he just developed his own his own thing just picking up little things from everybody else and i think that's what happens to every artist i sat beside him when i first started I was, we were at Homage Studios in San Diego. Uh, Top Cow was there for about a month before it moved to LA. And uh, his desk was right beside mine. And I, I tell you right now, when I got to California, I thought I was the greatest artist of all time ever. You know, like I thought it was so good and I knew everything. And, <laughs> and the minute I, you know, artists were there that I had never heard of, they didn't even have anything out yet. And, and you could just, when it's in front of you, you can see how much better it is. It was so daunting. And then Jim Lee was there and he was drawing, uh, uh, it was a page from, he did a uh, Wildcats um, um, Savage Dragon book mm -hmm. a long time ago. And he would just, and he does live streams. He draws the same way. I mean, it looks Yeah, good. I know. It's amazing. And watching him do it is surreal. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and then, you know, Travis is the only, only artist I've ever seen who would just start with an eye and just fan out and like no layout the whole page no layout because wow. it, just see it in his head it's like a level of genius that you know and that was when i realized okay uh i can get better <laughs> but i'll never be that you know it's not possible yeah. there it's just a level of talent that you know so yeah yeah, was, yeah i think it's easier to ignore that when you work at home you see people's finished work and when it's really good you get upset i do <laughs> but, you know, when it's right in front of you like that and you watch and do it you, you just see that you know a higher level of talent and you kind of have to accept it and move on yeah it's uh it's like uh was it um rt barry was telling a story where he uh he said he went to a a, a um a convention with jim lee and jim was sitting right next to him and jim's just like just shooting these things off man these these sketches off and and art's like oh my god i gotta be like that <laughs> and uh, later on, then he found out he's like, no, 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 no. He's an outlier. Yeah. Okay, he's this is that's not normal, you know. Yeah. So like like guys like him and guys like Travis, they're like they're like they're not normal, you know. Uh, but, if you try to compare yourself to them, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna pull your hair out. Yeah. Well, and ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Would you but, go back if you could go back in time and work in a studio as opposed to working by yourself at home? If I could work in a studio right now. Yes. Oh, I would love to. Uh, now, I'm a little solitary, so I, I like working at home. I, I've been doing books on tape, you know, Audible uh, oh. lately, and it's great. You know, I'm going through basically everything that Stephen King ever wrote at this point right now. And I, you know, so I like that, just having it quiet and being on my own. But um, there's something about the energy that you get from other artists, and you know, when people are competitive and there were a couple of times at Top Cow where it got a little negative. I'm sure any studio, it can get a little negative when artists are really competing with each other, but the positive, you know, so much outweighed it and I miss it. Yeah. I've heard that from a couple of artists. They said that they, they, they kind of miss like that, that collective um, creative energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, but um, just given with the way the industry is now and whatnot, it, it kind of had to evolve in the way that it did. It, it did, unfortunately, and really, I think the biggest factor is just that, uh, uh, you know, publishing is, you know, not as strong as it once was with the internet and video games going the way they are. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're doing all right. And hopefully, you know, after, after we all can leave the house again, we'll still yeah. have something to go back to. But uh, at the time, sales were so high that it justified that level of, you know, you could have studios and 
you could pay for, you know, artists. Like I, I lived in a, an artist apartment with, you know, a bunch of other guys, um, you know, on a futon, but that was all paid for. And it would, so I didn't make a ton of money, but I didn't have any bills either. It was, you know, for a young artist, uh, it couldn't have been better. Yeah. Well, and right, so, right now, everybody's asking me for your social media. I'm going to drop that in the chat right now. Go ahead, Jimmy. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt that. Um, but also today, it, you know, times have changed for the next generation of artists. Now they have streams where they can watch like Jim Lee, you know, they can watch, you know, different artists. And, and it's almost like having the best of both worlds. You can audible. And then when you want to, you can kind of sh share this virtual studio. Yeah, well, and I want to do that. I, I got a, a little stand for my phone. I need a new phone too. I think it's old, but um, I, I want to do that. I just, I think the biggest um, impediment for me is I'm always busy and uh, I don't know how to do this stuff. And it's just, you know, finding the time to figure it all out. And I just need to, to take it and, and do it. So, oh, well, you got me. I mean, I'm more than happy to, you know, help you yeah, out you with it and stuff. And I'll and give you a call. Actually, I'll, uh, <laughs> and, uh, question. So yeah, I'll like I'll give you a call. Or, or, yeah, well, um, we'll I'm go, sorry. Ahead, go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. I was going to ask. I was just uh, getting back to that part where you talked about uh, how uh, like um, those uh, the image guys, but uh, like Mark Mark Silvestri kind of brought you guys in and mentored you guys. You did the same thing for uh, Jason Fabok, um, where you kind of like you kind of took him under your wing and mentored him. Yeah, um, you know, I, he didn't really have the benefit of working in the studio. Um, he, he would come over, you know, once, twice, a couple times a week, you know, and, and uh, we would go over things. And the thing is, though, he honestly learned so quickly. Um, he would have been able to do it easily on his own. I, I'm glad I could help, you know, but he is so incredibly talented that I, I really didn't have to teach him much. You know, it's a lot like Mark or a lot like Mike Turner, where you could just show him something and he would have it right away. And then what killed me is he would come back the next week. And not only would he have perfected that, but he'd have, you know, five other things that he's done where, you know, so it just, it snowballed very, very quickly. It was, wow. Yeah. It's really, it was a really cool story. I, I, I actually wasn't aware of that until uh, like, just like uh, about a year ago. And I was like, wow, that's actually, that's really cool for somebody to do that to, for somebody like, like you said, even, even if he is somebody that you, you were like, you no, know, he's going to, he would get there eventually anyway on his own, giving him that extra, that extra help and push like that. That's something you don't really see a whole lot of anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, he's a great guy too. It's nice having him over. And I, <laughs> we had him over for dinner, for dinner with his wife. Uh, actually, it's probably already six months ago. Time's going too fast, and now we can't. So yeah. we were just setting up plans to do it again. And, and uh, another artist that I, I worked with for a while is uh, Johnny Desjardins. Oh yeah, We've done stuff for a lot of stuff for um, Nick Rucci's company, um, Dynamite. Uh, thank you, Dynamite. I'm the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, covers for a bunch of different people. He's he's worked for DC, and uh, yeah, he's he's doing very very well. Um, Nayla Man asked, uh, Mikey, who's he? He missed the name. What was the name of the guy again? Uh, Johnny Desjardins. Okay. Yeah, he worked on a superhero book from Dynamite. Uh, that also I forget the name of it as well, so it's pretty bad. But uh, but yeah, if they just Google that, or we can Google that right here. I can pull that right up here in a minute. Well, not, yeah. not superhero. Um, um, speaking of like you're, you're talking that like you said you wanted to get back to it, you you, uh, you do have still have a um, a YouTube channel and you haven't posted anything on it for a couple of years now. Yeah. But uh, you might be surprised at how many people are actually still members of that thing. Um, you're over you're over 10k on that. And this is on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yes. And Twitch right now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We're streaming on YouTube and Twitch uh, live at the same time. But I I'm actually just, uh, I just checked out your um, your uh, your YouTube channel where I, I know you used to do like these little drawing demos on there. And uh, you've got over 10k followers on there right now, so uh, you've actually got a halfway decent platform to, to to like kind of pick back up on if you wanted to keep going with that. Well, definitely, I'll do it. Got to do it. I'll have you. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, anything I can help out with, well, I'm, right. I mean, I'm I'm more than happy to. Well, uh, but I, you know, yeah, I I, I had a, a question though. Going back to the studio thing, if you hadn't worked at Top Cow in a studio, do you think you would be the artist you are today, not having that environment no no um so much of my influence comes from yeah there's some johnny stuff right there yeah oh, uh, okay oh, friends. okay i know what you're talking about now um so much of my influence comes from those days i've learned so much and you know it really affects who you are as an artist i uh was most influenced by mark Silvestri anyway um but 
you know, I, I found out at the studio, I, I'm a huge fan of Mark's artwork. He's the best, you know. Uh, I couldn't do it, though. I couldn't pull it off. I tried. And uh, I was fortunate to be in a studio environment where even though I wasn't able to really work like Mark, and I just wanted to draw exactly like Mark, you know. Um, I had a lot of guidance in finding my own style, too. You know, I think actually it's 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 funny. Uh, my my biggest influence in terms of finding my own style, uh, you know, such as it is, was Bat, uh, Matt Banning. He was an anchor at, at Top Cow. And uh, I was freaking out. We all were, you know, we were young. The amount of people that would come in, there were quite a few people that, that came in and then would just disappear. I never saw somebody get fired, but people would just quit. Wow. You know, it was very stressful, you know? Um, and I was, I was almost there. I just, I was really struggling. I couldn't make it work. I, I couldn't get my work to where, I, like, I could tell that it wasn't where it needed to be. I just couldn't find a way through. And, uh, Matt said, you know what, uh, what other artists do you like? Like, you know, look at some other artists, find some different influences. And if, if something's not working, try and bring something else in. And so I, I thought, I don't know, look, I'm, I'm looking through, you know, I love Jim Lee's artwork. But that style with the, you know, it, it had like a, a strong underlight with a lot of long, thin lines. I don't have the hand control to do it. I just couldn't pull it off. And uh, I, I was a huge Simon Bisley fan. And I said, you know, I love Simon Bisley stuff. I'd love to try and, you know, incorporate some of that. But I don't know, because it's so different than what we're doing. And, you know, I just didn't have the confidence to say, I'm just going to do what I wanted to do, you know. And he said, just go. So anyway, I, I went for it. And uh, he kind of gave me the confidence to try that. And that, for me, was the biggest breakthrough. At, at that point, I found I could, I could look at, you know, like Travis Trest. I could look at his artwork and say, I like this, and I like this. And I, and I could try. And, you know, I picked up a lot of how he does hair, uh, a lot of textures. And I just went from different, you know, Dale Keown was another big early one for me. Um, so it, it kind of snowballed from there, just picking things up from different artists. And really, that's my whole style is stolen from... You know, and I'm sure it's it's got to be fairly easy to look at my work and say, okay, this is from this guy, and this is from this guy, and you know. It's well, that's kind of interesting you say that because I see a lot of people, a lot of a lot of other artists who are now kind of doing that with your work. Yeah, you that's know? what I was getting at. <laughs> right. um, like I see some myself. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and then I see some of that in like in in Jason, and then uh, one of the guys that uh, we reference on here sometimes, uh, ZHC Zach. We see a lot of that in his too. Um, so you, I mean, you, you're, you've been enough, uh, you've been around for a long enough time. You've been enough of the influence that you were starting to see people kind of taking pieces of, uh, uh, pieces of your work, especially, and I've, I've noticed, uh, something in, in some of the work that you've been done even lately. I saw that Wonder Woman piece and you're getting really crazy with those textures, man, in the backgrounds and stuff. Like, I'm like, I'm looking at that. I'm, I'm, I'm like, man, that's like some Bernie Wrightson level stuff right there. So, <laughs> wow. um, yeah, it was uh, like a, a definitely, a, and uh, just I just like the idea that I, I just like watching uh, artists like you and uh, and uh, Jim and and, and um, 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 Silvestri, they continue to evolve as time goes on. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think you evolve or you um, fade, and you slowly get worse. You know, it's I, I feel like it's a little bit like a handwriting. You know, the longer you, you can look at someone's early handwriting, and it's you can see, you know, it, it's it's a little stiff, but everything's done correctly, and you know, and then you get to a comfort level, and then it it just gets looser and looser and looser until the next thing you know, you're writing like a doctor. And uh, <laughs> comic art, I, I feel like it can go the same way. You can draw the same face so many times that it just starts to, you know, lose its character. And and so you, I really try to bring in different influences all the time and steal from other artists. Uh, you know, hopefully not too noticeable, but I do it. <laughs> and, uh, and I also, I'm not the best with this, but I really do try and spend uh, like a good half an hour before I work during the day to just uh, uh, sketch. And, you know, um, I, I got a bunch of how to draw animal books and I've been working with that over the last little bit. And uh, I feel like it's not sinking in. Yeah, I, I, I really need to do that too. <laughs> it's so, it just it felt so easy, you know. I learn anatomy like I learned how to draw an arm, and boom, I would just I would have all the muscles. I knew where it was. I'm older now, and it's harder. Like I, I've been working on backs too. I'm terrible at drawing backs, which is I love capes. The best, you know. <laughs> and you would think the amount of effort that I put into trying to learn it, I'd be better at it. But it's tougher when you're older. So I would say, if you're a young artist, you know. 
uh, concentrate on the fundamentals as much as you can because it's tougher when you're older. And if you let stuff slide, it's it's tough to shore the weaknesses up. What does a, a regular workday look like for you? Um, I wake up at about uh, eight o'clock, um, and uh, you know, have breakfast. We walk the dog. We got a puppy. She's 11 months old now, and she's very energetic, so she needs a good hour. She doesn't really get an hour. She gets about 45 minutes, but <laughs> you know, she runs. It's We've got woods pretty close, so she runs like crazy. And uh, then I, I get home, um, and uh, I start working. I work basically from, you know, about 9.30 or so, a little later, 10, till uh, 4. Um and depending on what I'm doing, like I, it's not enough time for me to finish a page, whatever it is generally. So I'll, I'll get as much as I can possibly get. I try and set a goal and say, okay, this is what I've got to draw. And if I can get this far on it, then I'm in good shape. And so it, um, yeah, I, I get as far with it as I can. Anyway, then I come upstairs and have, spend time with the family and have dinner and everything. And then I, I uh, go downstairs and work. Generally, it's around... 9.30 or so by the time I can get back down. Um, I can be a little bit of a recluse when I'm working and it's nice to spend time with my wife too. So, you know, and I usually work until about uh, two o'clock in the morning or so. And then I find every like four days or so, um, around one o'clock in the afternoon, I just pass out and I sleep till like four anyway. <laughs> so I might have to go to bed at the right time. <laughs> That's right. the benefit of working from home. It is, and you know, I concentrate better when, when it's quiet in the house, so. Uh, as much as I don't like crashing every few days, I, it's more productive for me, I feel like. Yesterday here in the U.S., it was National Wear Pajamas to Work Day. It's <laughs> like, I'm doing that every day of the week, man. <laughs> I know, yeah. If there's anything, we all have the advantage. Well, two of us, you're at work right now, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he is Bob. Bob's at work. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. two of us anyway. Yeah, I've, I've been working from home for years, so. <laughs> so uh, at this time, do you want to start opening up uh, questions from uh, people that are uh, in the comment box, and we'll start the um, the inking demo. And uh, I'm a yeah, I got a couple of questions on deck from the from the from the chat. Right. When you get going there, right before we go into the, give them a few minutes to gather some of the questions. I'm going to pull up the uh, the cover that Dave Finch penciled in that I'm inking for an actual project. Uh, and Dave hasn't seen these inks yet, so uh, you're going to get we're all going to get his reaction at the same time. So I've been delaying. I'm I'm scared, Dave. I'm scared. <laughs> I, I should say Mr. Finch at this point, right? You're like Mr. Yeah. Finch. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull that up here, and we'll get to see uh, what the cover looks like. Okay, and uh, go ahead and uh, get the uh, first chat here. Um, from, uh, and again, I apologize guys. I'm going to butcher names left and right here. Um, Dave, uh, Philpot, uh, let's talk about writing for a second, Dave. How does your approach to the art change when drawing from your own writing versus another writers? Well, I haven't done a huge amount of drawing from my own writing. It looks great by the way. It's looking really good. Awesome. Thank uh, you. I, I'm not the best writer in the whole world. So I, I, the way that it works is uh, I'll start with something relatively tight and it goes along pretty easily. And it's just like working with another writer. And then next thing you know, I, I don't know where I want to go with the story and I make a few changes. Uh, when I was writing Batman, I literally got to the point by the third issue where I'd wake up in the morning and go, okay, I need to figure out what to write today. So I had something to draw. And then I would just draw that next page. I'm sure it showed, you know. Uh, that was actually the last thing I wrote, and because of that, it's, I don't know, maybe I would enjoy writing if it was the only thing I'm, I'm doing, but it, it's it's not, and uh, I, I just found I can either, you know, concentrate on what I do well or, or try and be a writer too, and, you know, I'm not Frank Miller, so I let it go. My The extent of my writing now is uh, when my wife, Meredith, who, you know, is my name right now on the screen, um, <laughs> When she writes, I, I read her stuff and we talk about it, you know, so editorial a little bit, you know, somewhat just like a, somebody to bounce stuff off of. And I enjoy that, you know, every once in a while I have an idea that she'll use, you know, so I just try to, when I read something that she's written, if I have an idea for it, I'll throw it out there. And if she doesn't like it, I, I don't 
get upset about it because at that point it's not being you know it's not editorial it's it's trying to butt in on somebody else's work and then, so i try and be careful with it cool um another question this is from uh tari uh the uh what's your dream book that you would love to work on like what's your yeah that's actually a question i've always uh, asked people is that that one dream project that you could have with any creative team you could possibly possibly work with what would it be um i'm gonna say like, writers outside of comics just to you know stephen king I'm a huge fan i'm reading a lot of his stuff i've read all of his books when i was younger and you know then i i didn't read anything from him for years so i'm going through it again um so yeah stephen king uh I don't know, uh, like like what project, like like any any like particular license or thing. Like like, man, I would really love to do something like that. Like Godzilla, give me Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, honestly, when I yeah, uh, when I say Stephen King, it totally throws it. Like but, Cujo or um, yeah, or uh, right now I'm reading The Talisman, which I read years ago. I'm reading it again. Oh yeah, oh, that would be fun. That's such a great book. Um, as far as just like straight up project goes, I would love to do Lobo. I love Lobo. I'm a huge Simon Bisley fan, so you know I think that would be an absolute blast. Oh yeah, that would fit beautifully yeah, on Lobo. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, like that uh, was the, the the Lobo paramilitary Christmas special and um, the uh, the Lobo crossover with Judge Dredd. Those are my two favorite books that he did. Yeah, yeah, wow. I love those books, but. Um, and uh, see, uh, life in decibels said, uh, I love Dave's cross etching and shadows. How does someone improve? Like, what kind of process to use? Um, my artwork is generally uh, uh, the way that I draw is I'll draw the basic cartoon, which is you know the the outline of the figure, the you know just no line weights, no thickness, and then I'll go in, I'll figure out where my light's coming from, and uh, I'll shadow just with solid shapes all of my shadows and then from there i render out of the shadows and the idea of the rendering is to create a transition from from light to dark and so if you have a really um uh hard transition in a form like if if it starts in one plane and hard, and shifts really quickly then i'll use a really short rendering or not at all and if it's a softer kind of a rounded form then i can render you know longer along that form and then the other really big key to rendering is, is knowing the direction and shape of your form. And that's why you know, form is, it's all about form. If you know, like it, it, the legs in the picture that I'm, I'm looking at on the screen right now, or the arms, they're essentially tube shapes. You know, they're <coughs> a little more complex, but they're basically tubes. And so I'm just rendering um, around that shape. Um, and then there's a certain amount of style to it too. Uh, and it's things I picked up from other artists um, so I'd be lying if I said all of my rendering actually serves a purpose, you know, strictly speaking for the art itself, for some of its uh, stylistic choice. And I would say that's not something to, to worry about at all. I, I'd say learn how to, you know, make it work, um, rounding your forms, learn how to make it not overbearing. That's, you know, it can be, it, I render a lot. And it's very easy for it to just uh, overpower a picture and close it up. So, and stylistic choices like that, you can pick them up from other artists. You you'll find that you'll you'll learn them. You're, oh, it's too flat. <laughs> <laughs> How stressful is it inking this with uh, the artist watching? <laughs> <laughs> especially, that. especially with such an established artist with a huge following. That your fans are sitting out there looking, <laughs> watching me at the same time. So what I'm pretending is I'm pretending I'm working at home and I'm listening to a Dave Finch podcast. <laughs> I'm telling myself he's not there watching. <laughs> well, I'm sure um, anybody looking at the picture at home, you can see it's very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm trying to I'm trying to hit these questions, man. They are flying here. Um, question: uh, Who are Dave's favorite current artists working today? Um. Jim Chung. Uh, oh gosh, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna end up forgetting Jim Chung and uh, Greg Pulo. Um, oh, and, Greg. Uh, um, Batman White. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, uh, Sean, Sean Gordon. Gordon yes. I love his stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, he's incredible. 
Um, uh, Tony Daniel, uh, uh, Ed McGinnis, uh, like such a long list of artists. I'm like totally <laughs> blanking out right now. I mean, there, there's, you know, there's, there's tons. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I love the Cuberts, everything that they do, you know, still. Uh, and they're a big influence on me starting out. Lee Weeks is actually another uh, huge influence for me starting. He did um, a uh, Gambit miniseries that was inked by, I think it was inked by Klaus Janssen. And I, I got that early on before I broke in and I learned a lot from that. And now he's doing, you know, Batman stuff and a bunch of different things. I love the stuff he's doing now. I think it's it's his best work. And, you know, I was such a huge fan of what he did before. So I saw Jimmy, when you're inking a long, like a really long shape, mm -hmm. you actually do like a, a guideline and then ink along it. Yes. Which is very, very cool. I don't know if anybody that's watching this, you should show them if you don't mind. Because yeah. I never saw somebody do that before, and it was very cool. And yeah. the cool thing, in case people are wondering, this is Clip Studio Paint, and uh, I'm using a Wacom Cintiq. But, uh, and I'm using my own brushes that I designed, so that I've designed them to work on a guide uh, so that I can create this curve and still control the line weight. I can go very slow and control the line weight and get a perfect shape and curve that's with 100% accuracy. Yeah, look at um, that. And if I decide I want to, Go back and change it up i can go with like thin and then thick again on that exact same shape uh and that's all with a custom brush that i that i designed uh to to work that way yeah and you know that's a it's a bit more effort but to do that line on paper you have to use a template you know like a curved template or something which yeah i end up doing you know i never when i was penciling i never worry about that i just bake it and then you know the grass to fix it but when you're inking it yourself you end up having to yeah. To do that i love what you, what you did with the eyes oh that was uh i was so glad i'm glad i got you on here uh too because i didn't know you know because this this is dave finch's pencils yeah none of uh, that was there and so i i took the liberty of, of adding in just a little more uh you know expression on the eyes and i i wanted to make sure you know that that was okay and i it's a touchy thing eyes you know it's yeah uh, but yeah i think it turned out Right. Every artist that I've ever talked to said, like, the face is the most important thing on a character, and the eyes are, like, the most important part of that face, and that's why so many artists, like, start with those eyes. Yeah. But um, one of the interesting things, and then, Jimmy, uh, you actually have a couple of people asking you how to get these, these brushes, uh, so you might want to throw up your gum road on here real quick. But uh, yeah. one of the reasons yeah. why these, these brushes look so good, guys, is because, like, like we've talked about on the stream a couple of times, and I've talked with uh, other inkers like this, like Richard Friend, R.T. Bear. Um, Jimmy bringing those traditional skills, those those traditional pen and ink skills, into the uh, the digital, and uh, he he developed these tools to work like those tools, and that's the reason why if you look at, at Jimmy's work as opposed to a lot of other um, digital um, inkers, his work looks more like traditional. So he's he's bringing that traditional style into the digital here. So uh, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, man, like when I found your tutorials a long time ago, like that was one of the things that I was like, that drew me to this. I was like, wow, this doesn't look digital. Yeah. It, it, you know, well, I was. It, I just want to say quickly, part of it and what really, uh, I actually, I bought them like two weeks ago. And uh, um, I, I'm, I'm doing everything on paper right now. Um, but I'm experimenting with it because, you know, for obvious reasons. I mean, it's, it's so much more efficient um, but i use a, a rapidograph i use a point one uh not a rapidograph like a you know what i'm talking about jimmy the a micron micro, sure yeah point one micron uh a point three i've got um a tombow um a brush pen it's not really a brush it's like a um it's a harder kind of a spongy Anyway, you can get a good thick to thin on it, but you can't get really thin, so you have to be careful with it. I use that, and then I'm using um, uh, a brush, like a, a sable brush. Again, I'm cheating. I'm using a pocket pen type of a brush. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, those are as close as I could get to you know, the most traditional tools, which is uh, for a thick to thin line, you use a hunt mapping point one or two. Uh, that's or it, you know the, the, the Japanese is the deleter pens you know what I'm talking about yeah um, but they're very similar you know 
and then uh, you know a, a sable brush and uh, um, some tech pens, you know. And Jimmy's uh, inking set is all based on. So you have like a Hunt One Hundred Two brush, and you have a you know a sable brush. So I can actually look at it and go, okay, I know what I'm getting, and you know they work uh, how you would expect that tool to work. So um, I don't know how many people watching really have done a lot of inking traditionally, but if you have, it's, it's a really nice uh, yeah. um, way of knowing that you're working with, with tools that are going to give you the effect that you're looking for. You know? Wow. Thank you so much, man. Having that said from my, my favorite artist. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. man. Um, um, so that, yeah, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Real quick, that, that nib that you were talking about, Dave, that's a synthetic quill. Um, that one that uh, it kind of has like a little plastic tip on it. Yeah. That, that Tombow one. Yeah. Yeah, those are synthetic quills. That's what they're called. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they, they are plastic. Oh, they call them a plastic quill. And they're, they're actually great, but then they they lose their ability to get thin really, really fast. So I, I buy tons of them and, you know, uh, end up chucking them out pretty quick. Yeah, that's the same thing uh, that, that I found that was happening with me when I was using those traditionally. It, the, you know, you, you can get some really nice fat lines right away, and then you get really tempted to press down because it bends and to get that really fat line, but then it won't go back to thin lines. So I, I found that's what was happening with me when I was using those. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm trying to find all these questions for everybody. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where's it at here? I lost it. Uh, oh, here it is. Um, this is from uh, Wo Rang. Uh, books for uh, any suggestions for books from for perspective, anatomy, facial expressions. Um, so basically, uh, any books for everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, perspective. I just got some really good books. Um, they're very in depth, and I'm not going to remember what it is right now. I'm so sorry. Um, the there was a what was the one, there was a book I got. It's um. Actually, I think um, Joe Casada actually used this. I actually uh, found out about this book from uh, from uh, RT Bear, and it was it's basically all these different uh, perspective grids. It's like a it's like a it's a book of digital perspective grids, like like that thick. Yeah, and they're all pre printed. And what he would do is he would just scan one of those. He would, he would like make a copy of that light box, and he'd use that to set all his all of his perspectives up. Ah. I'm so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to cheat like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the way I do it. And uh, before I change the subject too much, I, um, I will figure out what, what the book is and I'll, I'll let you know, Jimmy. So if you, you know, maybe you can put it up or something. Yeah. Um, for anatomy, I think the best stuff out there is uh, Andrew Loomis, all of his books, which are available for free online. You can get them on PDF. Uh, and um, uh, George Bridgman's. Uh, um, drawing for all it's worth. I think anyway, George Bridgman has a great mm -hmm. anatomy book. That stuff is excellent, um, and that's pretty much all of the anatomy books that I use. And then, really, the rest of it is uh, stealing from other artists. Generally, I mean, and I look at you know um, fitness photos, that kind of thing too, can be useful. But for the most part, you know. I have to say, I want to be a comic artist. I didn't really want to be a fine artist or an artist, you know? It was, it, and I had no interest in art when I thought that's what it had to be. So uh, yeah, I have no problem looking at the way that an, uh, another artist uh, draws an arm or something like that and saying, you know, I really like how that looks and I wanted to, you know, go in that direction. So that's a huge influence for me. It's just other artists. Joe Casada, you mentioned Joe Casada for perspective. Well, he's a big influence for anatomy for me. Mm -hmm. I, I love the anatomy you did on that Conan Moon Knight, the Serpent War. So yeah. Uh, thank you. That rendering is, is just amazing. You know, I, thank you. How do you find where to put your shadows and everything? You were, you were talking earlier about, about light source and. Uh, well, I've got them both lit from the left-hand corner, um, you know, our left looking at them and then there's like a kick light on the other side and i, I really like doing that it just gives it a little drama just having that you know that uh um uh, double lighting but when i'm thinking about lighting I, I don't really think about the other light source at all i i think much more about just my single light source and then the other light source um there are times and i don't know that i i don't think i did it with this one 
but I found, especially when I was less comfortable working, trying to get a, a good um, uh, secondary light source, is I would just shadow in everything as if it had one light source. And then I would just go in the other side and erase out my other light source. And it worked. Oh. So, um, but I really, you know, all the, all the forms are, um, they're just shapes in space. You know, they're very, like his arm is a cylinder. And so one side of that cylinder is where the light's hitting. So it's light and the other side is dark. Uh, and there are places I have to admit in my lighting also where it's, you know, it's stylistically, I'll pick it up from different artists and I like how they, you know, how they uh, make their choices. So it's probably, you know, it's, I like to think that it's 80 to 90% really looking at where the light's coming from. And then, you know, a good portion of it is really, it comes with experience with so much of how I light uh, a figure really comes from, you know, I think this worked in the past. So I, I just do it again, you know, or I picked it up from, you know, Kevin Nolan, Kevin Nolan for lighting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, question here. Actually, this is uh, from uh, this is actually a, a compliment. Is from B. Reg said, "Mr. Finch met you in Pittsburgh Con years ago. You were a class act, and obviously you still remain so. Thanks for the inspiration." Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll see you at one of these again when we can do them again. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them getting shut down, but uh, we'll get through it. We'll get through it eventually. Um, uh, but yeah, like uh, the, the when you you mentioned Bridgman uh, for for anatomy and for form, that's that's like uh, almost every artist I've ever talked to. They're like they, that's that's their go to, yeah. is Bridgman. And like 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 right now, I'm doing um, like he's got that. Uh, uh, I've got that. Uh, I'm working on that chapter with hands, and then it's just like the way he's got the just it's just broken down like that. It's like he could really couldn't ask for better. Oh yeah, he's incredible. Another an artist I love for hands is uh, again. You know what? I have the worst memory on earth. <laughs> what's what's the book? I can tell you who it is. It's she's a European artist. Oh, Claire, okay. Claire Wendley. Okay. Does best hands. She's phenomenal at everything, but I love her hands and I've stolen them quite a bit. Um, Ghidorah 76, best name I've read all day. <laughs> uh, Mr. Finch, which character do you enjoy working on the most from your whole career? Uh, you know, there are different things that I liked about different characters, and, and such a big part of it is the writer, too, you know. Um, but you know, that said, I would say Batman, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Yeah. I was going to say, it's gotta be Batman, man. The answer has gotta be Batman. Yeah. It's, I, love Moon Knight. <laughs> I, I love drawing the character. I think the most, I love drawing Moon Knight, but Batman has, first of all, I'm such a huge fan of the character. Yeah. But, you know, he's got Batcave and, and the Batmobile has got all the villains, the best villains in the business, you know? I think the only character that's close or comparable is Spider-Man. So I love Spider-Man's villain. Yeah. Um, uh, Louis uh, Julian. Uh, um, God, I'm not even going to try that last name because I'm not, I'm going to embarrass myself. Um, but uh, Louis asks, uh, you mentioned Stephen King. If you could draw a page from The Shining, which one would it be? The two little girls, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for me oh, right there. Two little girls were only in the movie. Not oh, I, I know. Oh, oh that, that's a good. That's a good question. Then is I didn't know that from the, a scene from the book or the scene from the movie. Then I hate to say it, I, and I love Stephen King, and I gather that he had some problems with how Stanley Kubrick did that movie. Mm -hmm. But oh. I'm going to say the two little girls from the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> the it's matter. the it's the most iconic scene from the whole movie. It is. Yeah. What What do you think of Doctor Sleep? Have you, uh, have you seen it yet? I, I love the book. I liked mm -hmm. the movie and I thought the movie was, it was good. It was, but you know what? I had just read the book and the book's always better, you know? Oh yeah. And so I think it kind of hurt the movie for me because I'm just constantly comparing it to the book. It was a good movie though. Yeah. And I think it's one of the, one of the biggest uh, takeaways from that is it's a, it's a different story from the, from the shining. Yeah. You know, it's a very different story. So if you go into it thinking it's like a direct sequel from the shining, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Will Rang said, uh, Jimmy, you got sick line art, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Um, oh, B. Rake said, the thoughts on Kenneth, Rock Kenneth Rockerford, one of my fa current faves and also that from the House of Top Cow. Um, that's a guy I was going to say, like, if you're really into backgrounds, into like, uh, like that's a guy to really take a look at because his friggin' backgrounds are insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when you when I look at his artwork, because I've never actually seen him draw. Uh, aside from you know quick little things on instagram and he is phenomenal and i'd like to add kenneth rockford to my list you know sure <laughs> yeah. but, um 
it looks like it's so easy for him too, you know, like there's no struggle there. And his backgrounds just look like that. It looks like everything is just where it needs to be. It's perfect. This is great. Yeah. And I was actually uh, talking to, um, uh, um, um, he, he actually stopped in and, uh, on, uh, the pontificators, uh, stream a couple of weeks ago. And I was asking him about his background. Cause I was like, I was talking, I was like, man, you do these crazy detailed backgrounds, like these cityscapes that just go on for miles and miles. Like, and asked him what his what his uh, what his technical background was, and he said he was a, he was a a medical anatomy artist. <laughs> so it's like you know the, that super uh, ultra detailed work that you see in those medical manuals and stuff. That's what he actually started from. So wow. it was one of those things. I was like, wow, this is like you went from that to doing these crazy superhero books with these ins with these insane landscapes. It's an, it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool. Well, you know, you're not going to get a better foundation than you know working. Yeah. At doing anatomy books. So I think it, it shows partly why it's so good. Uh, and actually, uh, and Mr. Uh, Machina said, uh, Mr. Finch, do you have any tips on designing backgrounds and environments, especially with gritty details? You did a, um, you did a tutorial on that, didn't you? I think so. Yeah. 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 So you, you've got it. He's got it. So there's a tutorial on uh, Dave's uh, on uh, David's um, uh, YouTube channel. I think that has uh, that has that tutorial on there. Yeah. Also, um, uh, I, I think they're still making the the uh, the Nomen uh, videos, right? You can still they get are. those. Yeah, I think you can go to the website. I'm pretty sure. And there's yeah. no background stuff on those though. But right, but uh, yeah. for the for the people who are asking for like anatomy and then how you do your um, your shading and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you go to the the Nomen School, I think it's what it's called. Uh, they have um, they have videos that Dave did uh, years ago, uh, where he goes over that. Yeah, and it, for backgrounds, the way that I plan it is, I uh, I do a perspective grid. Actually, you know what what uh, apparently Joe Casada is doing. You know, getting the the grid out of a book. Uh, I should look into that because you know I end up I tape a page to my page and use a long ruler and I find my perspective points and I I do an an entire tight grid lightly. And then I get my whole perspective in, you know, one page over here for one point and then another page over here for another. And then if it's, you know, so I can get, it, it's a little bit of time to get that set up. Um, but once it's set up, then I'm, I'm just drawing my, um, my buildings and things into an environment that I, I can, I can actually see that background in my head on top of, you know, that grid. It makes it very easy to kind of envision it. And then I just, so I, I lighten it down with a needed eraser. So it's nice and light. And then uh, I just sketch my buildings in just to get the general placement. I lighten that down again. And then I can just go in and just start detailing out my buildings. Um, a trick that I learned from Mark Silvestri early on was uh, you want to have a consistent light source. So, you know, if you're lighting again, you know, top left is probably the most general kind of light source. Uh, you make sure to, to light everything from there. But I like to have a building that's light and then a building that's dark and a building that's light and you layer back that way and it gives you a lot of depth just by layering your lights and darks and being strategic about it. And it seems like it sounds, I feel like when I'm saying it, it sounds kind of confusing. It really isn't. It's, it's actually pretty easy to, to do that. But um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh. Tari away says, uh, Mr. Finch, how do you approach a script for a book? Basically he's like the, 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 the writing that you have done, how do you approach like setting your script up? Um, I think, you know, Meredith, my wife would be. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to call for pinch hitter. Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get a lifeline. You get one lifeline. <laughs> awesome. no, we got both. We got two finches that's, in the end. Who knew, man? We get the, we got the gift tonight. That's, that's awesome. So, he wants to know how to how you start writing the story, and I don't know. She's not getting in front of the camera. She's not getting in front of the camera. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Um, um, I think the most important thing that you need in the story is your theme. The most important thing you need in your story is a theme. What's your point? Like, what's your point? Why are you writing it? Because so many people start a story. So many people start a story. And they don't really know where the story's going. And from. they don't really know where the story's going. Oh, right. Or what the point? Is, or what the point is for? That makes a lot of sense to me. So there, <laughs> there's some actual wisdom from somebody that do, writes. I, I have a question for for Meredith. Do now how how does she start the story? Does she write like a, a beginning, middle, end, and like write the whole thing out? Did you hear? Or, that? 
Or just like with a, you have like an outline or? I do like a, a one page synopsis of what the story is going to be. She does a one page synopsis of what the story is going to be. And well, that, we got, go ahead. Uh, actually, I'm saying then, and then what? Oh. And then I just break it down into like, what's the first issue going to be? And do okay. Synopsis. And then she breaks it down into like, you know, issues from there. It, it sounds, it's a lot like drawing, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind of like you start with the, you, you start with your idea, then you start with your underdrawing, and then you work on to your tighter pencils. And yeah, and you have your theme when you're drawing too, you know, you really, you know what you want to get across with the picture. You start mm -hmm. with that concept. And so, yeah, I think it's probably similar. I, I really want to get Meredith um, on the stream sometime to, uh, you know, because there's a lot of writers out here who would love to pick her brain. Yeah, and if it's an issue with being on camera, like you said, you, we, you, we do it without camera. She said she'll do it, not tonight. No, no, I understand. I, understand. I think she's actually awesome. in the bed. <laughs> so <laughs> I tried to drag her in front of this, she'd kill me. She, she's in her quarantine outfit right now, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, quarantine hair. <laughs> quarantine hair, yeah. You know, I've been cutting my own hair now for about two weeks. That's why I wear the hat 24-7, <laughs> even in bed. I've got the quarantine beard going, so... Um, uh, Naylan Malin said, uh, how would you recommend balancing life to drawing comics now with the rest of life? I love to break into the industry, but I find it difficult to practice when I'm still at school and have a job. Yeah, that, that's tough. And I don't know that there's an easy way around that. Um, the work best hard, thing work more, that's... sleep less. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, um, I, I feel like I'm going to say this wrong, but it's, uh, you know, discipline over um, resolutions, you know? So if you decide uh, whatever it is that you've got going on, what it, you know, if it's something that you really want and you really want to devote the time to, then you say, okay, I, I don't have, you know, 10 hours a day to be able to do this, but I have an hour. And you take that hour and you make most of it. And uh, that's the, the best way. It, really, it is the only way to do it is just to, and you don't do it when it, you know, strikes you as something that you'd like to do. It's something you do every day, whether you want to or not, because that's really how, the, you know, you, well, any job is, but certainly how drawing is, is, you know, there are times when I'm dying to do something and there are times when I just don't feel it at all. And, you know, you still have to, you still have to do it. And, you know, um, I, I hear about writer's block or artist block, and I, I don't think that's really a thing aside from, indulging the, the desire to not work you know mm. you just have to you're not always going to love it you're not always going to want to do it and you just have to do it it's a discipline and i think it's it what makes it's what makes the difference between a successful artist and a not so successful artist I mean, there's talent and there's you know there's study and there, there are other things but certainly uh i feel like in my experience I, i've seen so many incredibly talented artists not do as well as artists that are not not as talented and, you know, you give it a few years and those artists that are not as talented can become incredibly, incredibly good because they put the work in. Yeah. Discipline over all things. Um, Mr. Finch, as a self-taught artist, how do I get my work critiqued? Um, I'm assuming he means uh, like critiqued uh, professionally. Um, I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> putting your work up online is a really good way to get criticism. Uh, that's also going to come with, you know, like I, I find people, generally speaking, if people are actually communicating with you directly, it's very rare for somebody to be mean, you know? But a lot of times that meanness is useful, you know? Um, you can get a DeviantArt page. It's a good way to get your stuff seen. Uh, um, you can approach artists and, you know, try and get a, 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 an opinion on your work that way. Conventions, in my mind, are the best way to do it. And that's a tough one right now because who knows when we'll be back to being able to do conventions. But uh, just coming up to artists, I, I, I think most artists, and I certainly always am, I never turn somebody away if, if they want uh, a criticism on their work. And truth be told, I tend to, if I think somebody's work is is uh good and promising i can be very critical and kind of mean about it because um i think it's it's going to be worth it i mean i can see that the work is there and i make sure to say that too i don't just say oh this sucks but you know i really put the effort into trying to say you know this needs work or that needs work um 
because I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm talking to an artist that's really going to benefit from it. And then there are times where I, I you know, I, I just want to be nice because I don't want to be mean and that there's, you know, I think you have to, you know, when you're doing your own work, you really have to be honest with yourself. Are you um, really pushing yourself, you know, trying different angles, uh, doing perspective, faces, all the different things you need to be doing and, uh, you know, working on composition on your own, you know, are you actually making a real effort to do that kind of thing? And if you are, you'll be getting better at it. And I think you'll get much better critique, much more effective critique. Yeah. It's like that old saying, uh, a man should reach just beyond his grasp. It's a good saying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's, it's kind of hard to do sometimes though, man, because you, you, you like that feel good moment when you're like, oh man, this piece is really coming out good. But then you realize, yeah, I've done the same thing about 50,000 times. Yeah. Maybe I should try something else, but then it's going to suck. <laughs> and you risk the, you know, flying too close to the sun moment, but it's, it's worth it. You know, it's, yeah. it's worth having things not work and fall apart. Uh, sometimes I have found over the years, I, I tend to be very loose with layouts. I'm too lazy to really lay things out properly. So I just start drawing on the page. Um, and I've found I've, cornered myself way too many times that way so i'm trying to be better about you know laying i don't know what this has to do with anything we we're talking about but <laughs> <laughs> there, man, we go off on tangents all the time it, it's knowledge coming from the man so we <laughs> please share anything everything yep um <clears throat> life in Dis decibel says uh that's awesome the standard g pen in clip studio paint is good however it doesn't feel like uh, it doesn't feel to me like a real G pen. Uh, he's talking about the, your, the, uh, pens you're using and everything. Um, yeah, guys, if you haven't, uh, if you're interested in digital linking, um, and digital linking techniques, man, definitely, uh, check out, uh, Jim Lee, uh, J Jim Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Check out Jim Lee. <laughs> um, always check out Jim Lee. Um, but check out Jimmy's, uh, Gumroad. He's got all those up there. He's got the tutorial stuff up there and he's got, um, artwork to practice on. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm no. curious if you could say what it is about the pen that feels different. He's, I think he's no. talking to you, Jimmy. Uh, the Me, no, no, he's talking to the gentleman that put the comment. Yeah. Oh, life and decibel. Life and decibel. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's. I think, I think he's talking about how um um the the way it's the way it lays down lines. It doesn't feel like a, a real G pen. I know using a G pen for me, it's it's harder than a. Um, hunt mapping point it's it's very stiff and so it has a really particular feeling mm -hmm. and, uh you know i don't know jimmy if that's something that just is not capturable what do you think you know it, um he might be referring to like the either uh, uh, an actual g pin or the standard g pin inside clip studio paint it was the reason why i went out looking for trying to find something like the quill okay. and i couldn't find anything and that's what made me go through and actually build my own because you know, having used the actual quill, I, I was able to, you know, I knew what kind of line work I could get, what type of feel it should have. So I, I recreate that digitally. Um, but I have to say, I mean, I mean, it's going to sound bad coming from myself, but, but I mean, I think Dave, you, you mentioned that you agree, and uh, I'm really happy with what I created my pen. I, I like it. I like the work that I'm getting out of it. I know that I've been I've been doodling around with uh, with those, and um, I like any anything I draw in digital looks like a foot. So, um, but one of the problems I've always had is getting the pen to like kind of give me the line that I want. And I do notice that with Jimmy's tools, they do kind of seem more like actual traditional inking tools. The, the line, not the, not the way the pen feels in your hand, obviously, because it's, it's going to feel like the stylus no matter what, but the way that it actually reacts, you know, in the program, you kind of get that, you kind of get that feel. So. Um, and I think that's what he was talking about when he's talking about the G pen. He's talking about the standard G pen that comes with the uh, oh, studio yeah. paint. Because digital now, anybody can throw a pretty line. Like this is going to really make the line work easy. <laughs> the you know, but the quality of the line. But uh, you still have to develop your your eye for for line work. You still have to develop like even Dave was talking earlier about shapes, uh, light sources. That that's even applied in inks. So you you have to be conscious of the shape and everything, especially. Uh, when Dave mentioned about throwing his bleeds or his lines going around the curve, I have to make sure that I make those bleeds curve with the shape of the thigh muscle. Uh, and, you know, luckily I've seen Dave's tutorial where Dave said, um, if it's uh, not embossed or beveled up so high, 
if it's a lower in Boston, those lines are shorter. But if it's a, a bigger in Belleville, then he makes the lines longer. And, and so that stuck with me, and that's really helped me out in, in my inking. One thing that I'll say, there are times I go thicker, and then there are times I go thinner with the lines. Like if you look at the underside of his thigh, uh, there are some really thick lines in there. I don't know why I do that, truthfully. I style? Just, yeah, style. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I um, actually don't know why I go thinner and thinner. There. I do know if something's closer in the foreground and it's it's bigger, I want the lines to be bigger also. Uh, but yeah, there, there are some choices I make that I don't... I, have a good reason for i don't know why stop I, asking me why <laughs> just for the record you know i'm not some kind of speed paid sponsor from jimmy here for his you know brushes <laughs> you know? i am i'm michelle <laughs> <laughs> no yeah thank you um, yeah you know so and um brushes but yeah no this isn't some kind of you know I'm not advertising yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you i mean it, it's he's you know, it's an actual, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that because uh, Dave's actual customer, uh, a while back I had even offered and said, hey, I, I want to give you these brushes. And Dave said, no, 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 I'm going to buy these because I, I want to give my honest opinion and try it all out and everything. And so uh, I'm hearing this for the first time from him too. And I'm so, ex I'm glad you like it because I haven't heard your feedback yet. I didn't know what what you thought of it, you know. And Senpai likes me. <laughs> <laughs> I watch all the videos too. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Are, are you? Are you using a what's that? Go ahead. Are you using a Cintiq or yeah. what do you? Oh, you are. Yeah, I bet it on Cintiq. So. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, so this is a question. I man, this is this is gonna be interesting. Uh, Any Mouse said uh, you guys were talking about Bernie Wrights, and can you talk about how he did what he did? I don't know how he did what he did, man. That guy was like on another planet. Yeah, yeah, he's an artist out of his time. He really, you know. Uh, and just the fact that he was producing that stuff all the way up until the very end of his life. Yeah. Um, like that stuff he did on uh, that stuff he did on Frankenstein. Those, those last Frankenstein books were you know, absolutely insane. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think you can really see a lot of his influences were um, you know, kind of the golden age of illustration. Uh, some of that kind of work um, and some, you know, silver point. What I'm talking about mm -hmm. point where Gustav Dory would do, he would draw things and then it would actually go to essentially like an inker that would, would do the actual plates that appear in a book. And so if you look like a dollar bill uh, and it's got all the really intricate line work, that's all like a silver point kind of a technique. And he was picking up things from that. Uh, he used a brush really, you know, as well as anyone. I think that's a big, <laughs> You know, that's a big factor. I mean, if I could use a brush like Bernie writes, then I'd be trying to. Oh my God. There's a video. And I wish I could like direct away where it is, but I don't, I could not find it. It went for my life. My life depended on it. And he's freehand inking the border around a panel. And it's wow. freaking per He's doing it with a brush and it's perfect. It's, and I'm like, how? <laughs> it's, it's, like seriously, this is like, dude, are you a freaking robot? <laughs> and I think you know this is again a case of the kind of artist you can you can look at and you can, you know, really really appreciate. But yeah. you just want to take all your stuff and burn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's tough to aspire to that because uh, yeah, the level of genius that you know the rest of us yeah. don't have. He he was just one of those outliers, and like you said, man, he was he was so far ahead of his time. Yeah. I, I bet he didn't have any caffeine in his diet, man, to keep his hand that Either that or he had all the caffeine, and that's why he was able to do it. It's just like, I'm wired 24-7, man. You just throw that line really fast. <laughs> yeah. It's like everything that, – that's, no, that's why he was able to do it because everything was in slow motion. He's just like, this line is taking me about an hour and a half. He's so fast. <laughs> man. But – um. um uh, Mr. Machin has said, uh, I have your drawing of June the Swan from Gotcha Man on my desktop background. Study your work all the time. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that's that, that was actually something uh, cool that you've done recently that I I, uh, uh, I thought was, uh, was really cool is you're doing all these covers for these properties that normally wouldn't be considered like comic book stuff like that. Like one of the best uh, pieces I've seen Jimmy do, uh, do his work on was that Power Rangers uh, cover. And I'm like, that's freaking, that's really cool because sometimes like you, you'll associate an artist with a particular style, 
And then to see them do something like completely outside of that, it's like, oh, that's freaking awesome, man. But yeah, it's, it's cool to be able to do stuff like that. And actually, that was nice, too, because my son is a big fan. So, you know, for once, he actually cared about what I was drawing. He, <laughs> he loves Batman, but I think, you know, you see stuff every day. <laughs> Uh, to do, um, so uh, Dave Philpot says, uh, Jimmy, uh, uh, I'd love to hear more about how you first became aware of his. Oh, um, this is for a uh, director for Dave. Since, since, since Jimmy's my bud, I'd love to hear more about how you became aware of Jimmy's work and how you came to work with him. Um, I've been inking a bunch of my stuff lately for the last little while, and uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. And you know, I worked with inkers for years. I like I taught cow and I ignored basically everything they were doing because I was so concerned about penciling. And so um, I was going through videos and uh, Jimmy has the best videos out there. They're very, very good. So I, I was learning a lot from him and he uh, inked a, a picture of mine and I thought it looked really good. So I commented on the, on the video. So that's how I found his stuff. Cool. Yeah. And Jimmy's, Jimmy's actually told that story a couple of times. He's like, holy crap. So, yeah, again, it's like going back to the anime thing. Senpai noticed me. <laughs> it's the best story I've got, man. It's my best, it's my favorite story. <laughs> um, Michael Lee Pritchard said, uh, uh, been, hello, uh, hello, been a fan for a while since Cyberforce. A while back, you did some paintings, strawberry shortcake, and some other stuff. We'd be doing more of that kind of thing in the future. That's another thing I was thinking about your, your painting style. Do you do that? Uh, that's traditional, right? Yeah, it's generally it's acrylic. I've done a few oils. Oil is hard for me. Uh, yeah. I'm sure if I did it more, but yeah, it's all traditional. And yes, I will. Uh, painting is, I love doing it, but it, it's such a high wire act for me. Like, it, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's a disaster and I can spend, you know, four or five days on a disaster. And uh, so it's, it's, it can be a little tough. And then I get busy with, with work and I just, uh, it's hard to find the time so yeah, I, I I would love it. You know, it, it would be it would be great to uh, you know be able to hit pause and just just paint because I think I could get better at it if I if it was something I was doing every day. But it feels like every time I paint, it's like I, I'm starting from scratch again because I haven't done it for a year. You know, uh, but yes, I will do more. I just I don't know when. You, you had a painted cover all the way back on Ascension. I think it was like yeah. Ascension mm -hmm. six or seven. You did one for the uh, for um, what was it? Uh, um, uh, it was was it Justice League where it was the the Martian Manhunter like the War for Light thing. Oh, he's by the tree. Yeah, he's by the tree. Yeah, you did one for that too, didn't you? Actually, a bunch of paintings for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember those. Yeah, and I, I was starting to get comfortable because I was doing it more. <laughs> but then you know. Uh, I was also really neglecting my Batman deadlines. And once that started getting closer, I just couldn't keep doing it. So we had to stop. So yeah, it, and this is always kind of the back and forth. And yeah, that Cyberforce cover that I did was the first thing I ever painted. That was, uh, you know. That was pretty cool. I, I want to go back to the star strawberry shortcake. <laughs> so so why, why did you paint a strawberry shortcake? I was going to say, why was strawberry for, shortcake? <laughs> was it for work or, or was it a gift or? It was for an art show in LA. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it was it was like a video game from the eighties theme yeah. thing, and so I just did you know a bunch of crazy stuff. Dude, you'd be surprised oh. at how popular those old cartoons and stuff have become lately. Yeah, man, it was in your style, and it looks so good that I wanted strawberry shortcake on my wall. <laughs> it was it was kind of weird. It was one of those things where you're like like it's like it, it looks good, but man, it feels like a, it's almost like it's gonna come off the page, and like I'm here for your soul. <laughs> When I painted that one, I spent a decent amount of time on that. I thought no one is ever going to see this, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now it's all over the internet. Anything that hits the internet's there forever, man. Oh yeah. Um, let's see here, uh, just look at this question. Um, Jeffrey Owen says, "Hi guys, I have a question. Forever is willing to answer. As an artist trying to break in, what's the best way to get an editor to look at your samples aside from attending conventions?" Because uh, I don't think they do the, they, the, the not very many companies do the thing where you can send in uh, commission stuff. I mean, you you, you could send in uh, portfolios anymore, do they? Yeah, no, they they don't. And it, truth be told, it was never really a great way to break in anyway. Um, most artists broke in from conventions. I, I think the the best way to break in nowadays, 
probably even better than a convention is uh, to it, people are looking for artists for for projects all the time. I know you know Meredith did uh, a few projects where she started searching everywhere online, uh, deviant art in any place, trying to find artists for some things. And she put out a, a call for artists on Facebook and got a lot of submissions and some incredible submissions that unfortunately weren't the right style for the book she wanted to do. So there's always that X factor. It could be in, incredible work and it's not right for that particular project. But I think that's probably the best way to break in is just, you know, uh, follow writers that are working on, on uh, uh, projects, you know, outside of Marvel and DC and looking for artists and submit to them. Yeah. And I, and I think the convention thing is like, that's pretty much the way you, you open it up. I, I, almost every artist that I've ever talked to is like, that's pretty much how they got into it. Unless it was like some kind of talent search, like like uh, Image had that talent search thing years ago. Um, yeah, well, me, I got in from a convention. It was in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I showed everybody. I got some, you know, I went to a few conventions. I got good feedback and some good criticism. And then uh, I finally uh, ran into Talk How. Um, and uh, the editor, Dave Paul, who's the editor at the time, was at a different convention somewhere else in New York the same weekend. And uh, they said, just wait, you know, he'll, he's coming back. So I hung out outside for, you know, about an hour or two or whatever. It was a nice day. And uh, <laughs> I went back in and showed him my work. And they wanted me to do um, a sample pinup to show that I could draw their characters, you know, uh, which I botched terribly. I, it was like the worst picture, but it was good enough and i think also mark knew um that uh he's going to be teaching me on the job anyway mm -hmm. so, i know i know i know uh, um uh, joe benitez has got some stories where he talks about like jim uh, like where uh, mark would come in and show him show him, show him how to draw an arm you know and he's yeah. like and like you know so those well, guys yeah. taking you under the wing like that was really cool well and you know you look at uh and you can see it in some of my early work you know, the whole image looks like crap, but there's like part of an arm that looks awesome. And that's <laughs> but you had told the story a while back when, when we were talking. Um, you had said about uh, you didn't actually buy comics. You actually would steal them from your sister. Yeah. Well, yeah. At first, uh, I um, I got introduced to comics really late, and she she read comics, and uh, so yeah, I started, and she would never let me look at them. She's very possessive. She's great. You know, but we were, <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I would steal her comics and I didn't actually originally do it because I thought, oh, I want to draw comics. I just, I needed something to read. I had nothing to do. And I think it was summer vacation, you know, and, uh, uh, it didn't take very long for me to go, you know what, this is, this is really what I've been missing. You know, um, I failed art twice, maybe three times in high school. So I kept taking it. I figured, out oh, it'd be easy. All I need to do is just get over myself and do the stupid little art projects they have you do. At least it'll be an easy mark, you know? And then I could just not do it. I would be sitting there drawing skulls or whatever heavy metal thing, and uh, I would flunk. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dave Finch flunked art class. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, no fault of the teacher, unfortunately. Uh, really, <laughs> it wasn't for me, you know? I Like having to do, uh, and I'm sure, you know, any, any people watching this that have taken art classes you you do the color wheel and you have to cut up little shapes and paste and that i never actually did it part of why i flunked i just couldn't do it <laughs> he did it so and i, I tend to be more self-motivated learning anyway I, I never actually finished high school um it's very difficult for me to sit in a classroom and learn that way i'm, I'm much better just you know doing it myself and and trying to muddle through it or more at Top Cow, I used to, Mark would come in and uh, I would I would hide. Look at what I'm doing, you know? And I learned so much from him, but it was it was always difficult for me to. Yeah. Just constantly uh, having him over your shoulder, been like, man, he's going to say this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> he never, of course he never did. Right, right. But you could see on his face. <laughs> <laughs> um, game for this right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, SC Powerlifting says, uh, SCS Powerlifting says, uh, Mr. Finch, do you still use reference when drawing your characters? Yeah, all the time. I mean, for the most part, no. Um, like, I didn't use any reference for this. Uh, but, yeah, I look at things all the time. Um, yeah, I 
the worst of drawing backs. I've got a huge, huge folder of, of oh my God. you know, fitness, whatever, just to help drawing backs and things like that. Things I'm uncomfortable with, like backs really is the big one for me. Um, so yeah, I look at things all the time. I look at other artists all the time. Uh, just, you know, partly it's, you know, uh, for, a, for a cool pose, you know, that I can, I can kind of work with as is like a, a, a springboard, you know? And a lot of times I, I think I, I look at other artists almost more for just like a compositional ideas, you know, because uh, that's uh, the success or failure of a picture is so much based on on just the overall, you know, how the image works and how the overall composition works. And if that doesn't work, uh, it kind of falls apart. At the same time, I never wanted to be the kind of artist that really worries about composition too much and worries about, you know, the more advanced concepts that weren't too much because what got me into comics and made me interested was you know the cool anatomy and like just I, you know artwork that i thought looked cool and i never that high to, energy yeah and i never wanted to forget that and and kind of lose sight of what was important for me and it was that so you know um you could probably say i've never matured as an artist in some ways like some other artists but i don't want to <laughs> Would you say that uh, you had said that when you were first starting to draw, um, you had certain influences? Have your those influences changed throughout the years that you've been an artist? Yes and no. I, I mean, I'm still influenced by all the same artists that I was. I really am. Um, but yeah, there there have been others. You know, like uh, Sean Murphy, I think is phenomenal. He's incredible, and I'd be a fool to not look at what he does and, and try and pick a few things up from it. You know. So it, it changes as artists come along. Another artist I, I didn't mention that's huge for me just lately is uh, um, Jorge Menes. He's doing oh, Batman. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable the work he's doing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Life and Decibel has a question for all three of us. Uh, with the COVID-19 thing, do you think digital slash web comics are the future? Um, I think it's a big part of the future. Um. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know that's ever going to replace, uh, I, I don't think it's ever going to completely replace uh, physical comics though. I, you know, I worry for where we're going uh, as an industry, just because I think physical comics are so vital for comics. So, you know, with a book, uh, oh, actually, Jimmy, I wanted to, I know it's still in there in the pencils, but I wanted to keep the lines out of that circle. The lines out of the circle? Yeah, it's supposed to be an energy effect. Oh, uh, the circle. Oh, no, the circle. And I'm going to point to it as if you can see. But where oh. it is where you put those some of the rendering lines coming out from the explosion at his feet. Uh huh. Just in the circle around his hand. Oh, right here. Yeah. Oh, right, right. It's an energy thing. Oh, awesome. Okay. See, this is great. That's a, that's the it's, <laughs> it's the good thing about having the penciler here. But the bad thing is, we're we've got an audience of people. <laughs> no, no, hey, the audience is finding out. Like this is this is what happens. Because if you had done this and sent it to him, he's like, okay, you need to take those out of there. But it's also one of the advantages. I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's such a, a great guy. But, uh, but you know, the, the cool thing about digital is that I can, I can change it. I can, yeah. it's not a problem, you know. Mm -hmm. um, on the leg muscle here, do you want me to, that's right inside, if, if I draw oh, a no, circle? That's fine. Yeah, I would okay. leave that. Actually, I probably shouldn't have put that in there, but. <laughs> no, that's why, that's why I was wondering. I mean, if you want me to, uh, I can always knock it out of there. You know, it's so easy with digital. Yeah, I'll leave that. that. You're right. Actually, it probably shouldn't be in there, but I'm leaving it. Let's leave it. I, I like it. I like it. I don't think anyone's going to notice, you know? And I think do it live. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it live. <laughs> right here. Um, yeah, I I agree with you, though, man. Like, I'm a, like, I, I understand. Like, I know some people that they, they prefer their comics and stuff digital. Me, personally, I just like having it in my hand, you know? And I feel like the, it, it's it's made to be in that form. Yeah, and I, I, it's not the same otherwise. I mean, I, it's it still works, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's such a physical medium, and uh, I, I really pray that uh, comic stores can weather the storm right now. Yeah. I also think that, well, I mean, um, one of the things that somebody put forward is that uh, part of the reason that uh, there's, a, there's a major issue right now is that there's so many titles. You know, there's this thing because because there's kind of this flood the sh flood the market uh, flood the shelf market uh, scheme that's been going on. Um, 
And that kind of uh, is one of the reasons why so many people are talking about going to digital is because there's just so many titles. You just can't you can't eat that much cost. Um, but I feel like if if they were to, you know, really go back to kind of the idea of condensing that talent pool down and getting those top tier artists on books like that, then people are going to buy more of those books. You're going to the, the profits are going to be there if you can reduce that 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 uh, library a little bit. I got to be honest, I worry about that a little bit, though, because, you know, there are artists that, that appeal to a broader market, just like any industry. You have, you know, actors that appeal to a broader market. But I would really hate to see, you know, uh, I, there are genius artists that, that don't have the same size of an audience. But what they do, I think, is, is pretty vital. And it's what keeps comics, you know, interesting. And I think artists like that can also influence the industry more than an artist like me, where, you know, I, I'm more of an image type of an artist. And that's the kind of work that I do. I'm not an innovative artist. And I would really hate to see artists that are really innovative and doing something different uh, start to disappear. It would be terrible. Well, there's also, um, um, you know, there's also the the uh, the crowdfunding market and everything. We're seeing that really blow up. And, uh, the you know, indie books and, and, and going to like uh, more publishers like uh, – um, like image and dynamite, you know, where they're like these, these, these self-owned properties, uh, kind of like the Millerverse kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, uh, there's always that market as well. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to, you know, try to be Nostradamus here, predict what's going to happen because so much of everything is in flux right now. Um, yeah. me personally though, I'm just, I'm, I'm a physical medium guy. I really, I really do want books to stay physical. Yeah, I have to think to a you know a greater or lesser extent they, they always will be physical. It's just so mm -hmm. um, so much what they are. You know, all yeah, in all, I just I hope we can keep doing what we're doing. I mm -hmm. hope, uh, well, and I think the industry is going to continue. I and mean, like like when people talk about the industry, the comic industry dying. I don't think I think that's a little bit hyperbolic. It's not it's not going to die. It's it's going to change form. Um, it's and it, and it kind of has to. But when it does, I really do think that, uh, you know, I, I think there's a place for digital, but I, I really think that uh, it's it's a medium that was designed to be, you know, physical. It was designed to be what it is. Mm -hmm. And I hope and I'm really hoping that the future it stays that way, at least at least, you know, in some form um, at the very least. But, uh, you know, hopefully we'll keep getting you know the good books that we keep getting. Yeah. Um, so, 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 so. Uh, Metal Movies and Bruce, you said, if you get writer's block, take a shower. It works for me. I'll try it. <laughs> uh, Will Ring said, Instagram is good for exposure. Yeah, I mean, it, it works for ZHC. Um, uh, Nayland Malin said, thank you, Mr. Finch. You're a huge inspiration to me, and getting advice directly from you is an absolute privilege. Well, thank you. Yeah, hopefully we'll get uh, get you uh, doing some more of these uh, kind of streams like this, get you back over on that channel, dude, man, because like I said, I'm, uh, you'd be surprised that uh, that thing is still up and going, and it's uh, still fairly strong. So, um, Frank uh, Frank says, uh, "Love the Magneto cover for Ultimatum Number One, One One Thousandth Variant, a masterpiece." Did you decide on how did you decide on the posing, posing and the lighting for that? Um, that was it. Was actually from. Uh, uh, the book. So it wasn't originally a cover. It was a part of a double page spread of inside the book. Um, so I, you know, I knew what the script wanted, but it, it, Jim Lee did this really awesome picture of Namor on a throne. And I think that's what I had in my head. And I didn't actually have that in front of me. That's totally what I was trying to do with it. I wanted that kind of, you know, feel. So it was like my attempt to you know, I I think there's some artists that are so incredibly talented that if they have an image in their head of, of what another artist did, they can just do it. I can't. I forget. So I think, yeah, that cover is me just trying to do Jim Lee's name work on the throne. It's different just because I wasn't looking at it. Uh, for the lighting, it's it's actually a fairly standard lighting for me. If, if I recall, I think he's, he's lit from the top left. Generally. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And uh, he's got a, you know, a kick light to the side. So, you know, it's it's not incredibly innovative that way. You know, it's, uh, I see lighting as a, 
it serves really two purposes. You know, number one, it's to define forms and give things some depth and some body. Uh, and the other purpose of it is to create mood, you know? And so uh, with a shot like that, I just really want it to be very moody and, and uh, he's a villain, so it's, it's dark, you know? I, I love that his helmet covers most of his face, so it really keeps a lot of it in shadow. So yeah, that's kind of what I was what I was thinking with it. And then um, his throne is made out of like a stone, so I wanted to render that in a really you know a different way than his body. Just to I, I love experimenting with different textures, you know, just yeah. to get different effects. Yeah, and like I said, like, like I've noticed in like uh, a lot of your your recent stuff, you really go on really in on those textures, and I think it I think it adds another dimension to what you're doing. So, um, good stuff. Uh, real quick, shout out to uh, Robert Marzullo, another big YouTuber, art YouTuber. Uh, thanks for being here, man. He, oh, um, yeah, he stopped in on the chat. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> um, well, for me, I. I um... I went out and I bought your uh, your Batman. They offer it now in Batman. Is it black and white or something? But it's it's a pencil book. It's it's the all your pencils. So I, I bought it so that I could actually see all your work in the raw without uh, influencing other inkers. And uh, for me, I, that was the best way for me to go in and kind of like uh, not reverse engineer, but just for me to absorb a lot of your your work that way. Yeah, would the you, way that it's drawn and then the way that it's interpreted and for sure. Would you, would you recommend that for for uh, people who want to pencil, uh, potential pencilers, to look at artists' work in the raw and pencils? Or oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, I know Jim Lee did one. Greg Capullo did one. Oh yeah, the unwrapped. The unwrapped. That's what it's wrap books. Yeah, I, I own all of those, man. I love those books. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna mail mine to you, Dave. I I, I got to get it autographed. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I have I have yours too, man. Um, yeah, I, I love those books. And like, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an, I'm an art guy, and I'm a detail art guy. So like, whenever those books come out like that, where it's, it's the raw pencils and stuff, I'm like, I gotta see that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I really love those. You, you um, mentioned, um, sorry, before we get the next question, you mentioned a little while ago that you like drawing Spider Man. Is, is that why you picked Batman and Spider Man for the auction piece? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, you know, I, I figured, okay, I, I love Lobo, you know. But this isn't a piece that I'm doing for me. It's a it's really it's a picture that I, I want to try and you know raise as much money for the charities I could. So I figured you know Spider Man and Batman is a pretty good bet for two, two two most popular characters in the world. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and you don't see them together all the time, you know. So I yeah. thought that would help. Um, real quick, we got a, uh, from Jordan Stewart. You got a uh, a super sticker for five forty nine. Thanks. Hey, for that. awesome! Thank you so much. That's yeah. a uh, in the chat. They, what we can do is uh, they can donate uh, in the chat, and that helps me with the price of the stream and stuff like that. Since I'm using a uh, type of encoder that you pay monthly, so it's uh, it's pretty nice. They show their support, you know, for the channel. Yeah. They want to, you know, they want to support support the channel and keep it going and stuff. So that's that's very very much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. So I pulled up your Batman here up on the screen. Uh, I wanted to just go over again the the auction. Now this hasn't been sold yet. Is is that correct? No. Um... I think it's the 20th is when it ends. Yeah, April 20th, 12 p.m. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And I noticed your starting bid was only at 250. Uh, I'm sure by now that that bid's going crazy now. I think, yeah, I think it, I don't think it was at 3,500 the last time I saw it. Oh, okay. Okay, so that way if they go in, they they how do they find out what the current bid mark is? They just uh, are they messaging uh, Meredith on Twitter or? I think yes. Meredith is the one doing this. I, I drew it and then I handed it off because, you know, not the best with this kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it would be Meredith's Twitter or her Facebook. I think it's up on my Facebook. The truth is, though, I don't actually use my Facebook. I use uh, <laughs> Instagram. That's me. Yeah. Yeah, I've got your uh, I've been dro I'm, I'm dropping I've been dropping your Instagram and your uh, your Twitter into the chat there. So, um, yeah, go check out Dave. Uh, David, I keep calling you Dave. I should ask you if that's OK. Yeah, yeah. Most people, <laughs> most people, I would say, call me Dave. All right, um, but uh, yeah, check that, uh, check Dave out on his uh, on his uh, Twitter and on his uh, Instagram, and uh, he's got a lot of his art stuff up there, and uh, all the links to the uh, the uh, the auction are up there as well. So, well, let, let's get in a few more questions real quick, and then we'll we'll go ahead and close up the streams. I, I know you're super yeah. busy, and I, I know getting you for like an hour or two, man. That that's 
really great. We're really grateful because I know how busy you are uh, there. So you, you can also tell us too. I mean, if, we, <laughs> if we've gone over the yeah, time, yeah. you uh-huh. know, just, just let us know. I'm good. I'm enjoying it. It's great. All right. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I want, we, I want to see more Jay Finch, you know, I, we don't get enough of you on Instagram. We, we don't see you enough on, on, you know, in, in the streams. We, we'd love to see you more. Everyone's always asking in here. They've seen, I've worked with you and they, they're all Dave Finch fans. Well, I'll have to do it again. Um, yeah, definitely. They, I'm sure everyone would love that. I'm sure guys, you know, post that in the chat to encourage them. So, <laughs> so we can get Dave back again. That'd be great. That would be awesome. Um, yeah. Moto, uh, Moto, Moto, uh, Moa. Oh God, I'm butchering the crap out of that. <laughs> um, recently I went through a block and couldn't get out. The only way I got out was going back to the basics with your anatomy tutorials. Thank you again. Oh, great. Um, yeah, thank you. And that is, it's, you know, the best way to do it is just, to you know, uh, it, cause I, I've been there where I just, I hit a wall and I just, I don't know what to do. And it's, that's the time to just throw everything away and just, start from scratch and you won't, it's not possible to actually throw everything away because it's still in your head and it'll still inform what you're doing. But when you have habits that are not working, yeah, just throw it out and start from scratch. You will be a stronger artist coming back out of it. Um, Brady Word asked, uh, Mr. Finch, when you learned to draw buildings, did you reference photos, books, or other artists' works? I've been using Ultimatum per Jason Faybox recommendation, who was kind enough to email with me. Um, um, I think uh, we went over that a little bit already where you like, you pull mostly from other artists. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would <laughs> say my buildings are like for Batman. Wow. Well, generally speaking, my buildings are probably Mark Silvestri, you know, <laughs> <laughs> really. Now, now do you, uh, do you prefer Mark's older style or the, the, the newer style he does where it's like, it's a lot more sketchy. I kind of like the new style. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. I have a special place in my heart for the old stuff, you know, because it's what got me into comics, but the new stuff he's doing is, I mean, it's bonkers is yeah. It's incredible. It's his best work. Um, yeah. So yeah, my buildings and really he taught me how to do it. So, you know, there's that. And then, uh, um, the designer for the Batman, the original Batman, Tim Burton movie, he did some drawings. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of that I used, um, uh, Joe Casada does some great stuff great buildings. I love how he can layer and use lighting. Uh, Frank Miller. Um, and Frank Miller, you know, it's such a stark style, but uh, it's, I remember when I, when I first started looking at comics, I thought somebody like Frank Miller or Mike Mignola, Mike Mignola is a big one for me. I love that guy. Ass, like, steal from that all the time. Um, <laughs> I actually, there was a cover where I stole from it way too closely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has too too close. Well, nobody does well but but nobody does nobody does like uh like uh, uh shadow in negative space like he does man yeah it's it's the best so yeah looking at artists like that is, is how I, I did a video on here where i was showing an example of my my inking and i pulled up your hellboy that you did and uh, i grabbed it off the net and started inking that on the live stream that hellboy that you did i mean you've done several i i, I saw online there were a few but this one that you did man have you ever done that was, were they all commissions or was it was any of the Hellboys a cover? It was all commissions. It was all commissions. Man, you would make a great Hellboy cover. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, that'd be a blast. It, it was it was awesome to to, to see. I wish, I wish I had it up here on the screen. <laughs> um, we'll take one more question here. Um, it's from Carl Roberts. Uh, how much do you draw in general? Like how many how many like how many hours a day usually? Well, uh, ten to four. What's that for? Six, six hours and then uh, nine till two, basically. So, yeah, I don't know, nine hours, basically. Probably. So, when you were coming up and you were you were working, was it uh, you know, like you were just like doing that thing where you're you know eight to ten hours a day every day trying to trying to build that muscle memory? Uh, I, I can be a little obsessive, so <laughs> learning how to draw, I, I was drawing, you know, twelve hours a day for sure. Uh, you know, I basically disappeared off the face of the earth and uh, stopped going out. You know, I, I had to get dragged out of the house. I, I have, and I still have actually all the same friends. I'm, I'm in the same city and, you know, they're great. And they would come over and drag me out of the house, which I appreciate. But yeah, uh, that's all I did. And when I started at Top Cow, um, I was, again, it was all I did. And, and you know, I was staying in an artist uh, apartment with, you know, so many other guys. You couldn't really just go back there and relax. So I, woke up 
and worked. I did that for, you know, a long time. And so, you know, it's harder to do that with, with kids and a family and, a, you know, other commitments, but I still, it's a work intensive job and it's something that's it's really important to, to bear in mind. It's, it's great. I mean, I draw pictures all day and, you know, I'm sure you can relate to me. It's, it's, it's great that way, but it's, it's also a, a huge time commitment. So, you know, it's what I do. Well, how do you stay in shape? I mean, you look like you're pretty fit. You don't look like, uh, you know, like, <laughs> like there's some comic artists who, who take a different shape. I am not in the kind of shape I was two years ago. You know, I'm working on it again, actually. I'm, I'm a little stiff right now. I, I started working out again. And whenever you let it go, it, you feel it. But um, I've got a dog and the dog needs to get walked. So that's a good, you know, just walking is, is good exercise. And, and then... Uh, I'm trying to get, you know, back into, uh, you know, uh, a good hour workout every day and especially sitting at a desk all day. Uh, if you don't exercise, it's, you can fall apart fast. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, they say that if you sit too long, you can get blood clots and stuff in your leg and, and things mm -hmm. like that. And I actually uh, stopped sitting at my desk quite a bit. Part of the reason I stopped using a brush and a quill and something I had to dip in ink is is uh, I just, I kick back on the couch with a lap board. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I'm just relaxed. Laying down <laughs> wow, your, your artwork, I mean, I, I shouldn't be saying that. I, I love the way your work looks when you ink it yourself. I mean, I, it's beautiful, you know? Um, I should say, no, stop inking yourself, Dave. <laughs> this is the, it's, it's you're beautiful. the second person to, to, to talk about kicking back on the couch and inking a, on an ink board like that. Damn, yeah, that, well, I, the downside of that is, you know, People come over and there I am sitting on a couch, and they're like, "Really? You know, <laughs> I'm working here." Like, no, I'm working. This is you working? Wow, this is man. But there, there, there is a um, a question up here that I want to pull up for you. That uh, it looks like Reed Troutman is asking now. Who, who's your favorite colorist? Uh, Frank Tiramata. Oh, wait, oh, 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 right, right. You worked with him on uh, the. Uh, we were just showing the uh, Moon Knight. Yeah. Uh, and, and so he, he's the, the colors on that. Yeah. And uh, Tomu uh, at DC is doing the, my DC stuff is phenomenal. He's incredible. So yeah. Um, I, Frank, for me, when he colors my stuff, it just, it looks like my artwork to me. It's a lot like, you know, um, I worked with Danny McKee for years and years. And eventually like I started picking up things that he was doing and, and it just, you know, feels like my artwork when he's inking it. And so that's, yeah. It, I always will love Danny for that, and I love Frank for that because it just it feels like it's supposed to feel when he covers it. Wow, that yeah, that, that's the one thing when you hand it off to a, someone completely different, they're putting their take on it as well. Yeah, you know? and, and I find for me it, it ends up influencing the way that I think about my own work, and uh, the pencils actually change, you know. And so it's it's like a real level of trust with an inker. It's a real level of trust because you know it. it it's uh, gonna have such a huge effect on on your work long term. Yeah, I mean, you know, if I could show you guys the scars on my back that Dave's put, and he's finally conditioned me now to he's beat me into <laughs> stop doing those lines, Jimmy. Shh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we never had a, you know, a lot of times it's a, you know, a bit of a back and forth saying, okay, you know, this is working and that's not working. That never really happened. It just, you know, but I, I think it helped too that. Um, when I first talked to you, I really liked what you were doing with uh, with the stuff you're doing. So I, I knew what I was getting into, you know, it just works. Oh, thank you. Actually, I mean, I, I've admired your work for so long and I've learned to draw from your drawings that your style is just embedded in my brain. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a, sometimes when I'm making a different artist, I'm throwing Dave Finch in there. And I'm like, oh, I got <laughs> I got to stop doing that. But I, I can't resist. You know, I, I love your rendering style and. Uh, we did have one question on here, and it's the same question that I have, and you and I have talked about it, so you can you can get mad at me if, <laughs> if I'm not supposed to ask. But um, they asked if Rudy Nebra was uh, at all an influence for you. You know, it's indirectly, because I actually had somebody ask me that years ago, and I wasn't familiar with his work, and I looked at it, and I thought, holy crap, like, it's so much, it, like, it's very similar. And so I've looked at it since then, so yes. But not originally, and and I think he's a very influential artist, and I think I've been influenced by artists that are influenced by him. Similar to me, um, 
John Buscema, who is actually a big influence for me now, but originally I was much more influenced by Mark Silvestri, who was influenced by him. And so it's like an indirect influence. I've, I've got a few artists like that. Like I love Alan Davis, huge fan. He is so heavily influenced by uh, Neil Adams. And for the longest time, I didn't know that, you know? So yeah, not directly so much. Yeah, your work's beautiful. I mean, and Rudy Nebra to me is like one of those great masters that you don't really see a whole lot of, but you're keeping that some of that al alive today, you know, and, and wow. it, it just reminds me of that type of quality of that, those wow. illustrations. Yeah, he was incredible. Yeah, I think what made him so awesome was his work of the figure, the human body. And and I think that that's what I love about yours. Yours looks like a like almost a Renaissance painting especially that Conan that you did for that Master of Serpents or Serpent War. It was it was Conan and uh, Blue Moon Knight or something oh, on the cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I love that piece. And, and uh, I, I'm, I've always wanted to have Dave Finch art up on my wall and, and I couldn't afford your original art. It's, it's way out of my price range. So I would like take posters or print out stuff on the internet, put it up on the wall. And then when you ask me to work with you, I now own a Dave Finch original, so <laughs> I will never let that one go, man. I've got to keep one for myself, you know, and uh, and it's it's on the opposite side of this camera. I wish I could take it down and, and show you guys, but you might remember the one that we did for uh, Billy Tan. For what? For Billy Tan. Oh, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was telling the story online where you, you sent me the drawing and it didn't have a background. And I took a, uh, it was supposed to be in outer space, and I took a tissue paper and ink, the first time I had ever tried that technique, I did it on a Dave Finch original art. Yeah, I totally took advantage of that one. I remember <laughs> saying, you know what, do your do thing. But I knew from uh, you know other stuff that you'd done that it would it would work, and it did it look great. Awesome, yeah, I'm, I was so glad. Whew, I, I, I was sweating, like I'm sweating now, asking the question now, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> but that's go ahead, awesome. more questions? Um, go, go no, ahead. I, I, I think that's enough. I know, I know Dave's uh, busy, so. Um, I think that's probably a good place to end it. If you guys are, are you guys are ready to go? Yeah, yeah. Dave, do you have anything you want to add or or, or cover before we we close uh, it down? Well, I want to say thank you, you know, for having me. I appreciate it. We'll have to do it again. And thank you for everyone that you know came by and asked questions. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and definitely thank you for coming. And uh, like I said, man, this was like I'm a, I'm a big fan. So this was this was really cool for me. And I know a lot of the people in the chat were really happy to. Uh, that you uh, took the time out and uh, yeah, if you ever get it, get around to uh, wanting to, you know, do those streams and stuff again, you got a platform ready to go and um, definitely take advantage of it. I mean, I know Jimmy, uh, Jimmy uh, left for a little while and then came back and he was like, Oh my God, this channel's still growing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I, and, and I know that uh, people are just starved for that kind of content. They're, they, they, they want to know um, like, you know, those techniques and what's in your head. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I have to say, they're like uh, trying to learn acrylic painting or trying to learn inking, some of these different things. You ask a question like that online, and the, the most common answer that I hear it drives me up the wall is, "It's not the tools; it's the artist." It's you know, but it is the tools. I mean, it is the artist. So of course, there's so much well, yeah. that has to go behind it. There's control. There's a lot of things. But knowing the actual tools and how it was actually done, still, you know, pretty helpful. I think. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and people are, like I said, people are starving for that. So, but uh, yeah, this was awesome. And um, thanks. Thank you very much for doing this. And uh, thanks, Jimmy, for letting me be a part of this, man. Like, like I said, this is, this is awesome for me. And um, thanks to the chat for sticking around uh, and uh, giving us all those great questions. Absolutely. Thank, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, hopefully we are, we're going to have Dave back on again soon and, and uh, we'll be, uh, Streaming again every Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m. and every Saturday, uh, 8.30 uh, p.m. as well, Central Standard Time. Uh, you guys have a good evening. Thank you.